I, I felt softening that you said you felt when you dropped out of the kind of judgments and the pain into the deeper, con the need for connection. And that was a that was a, I guess a compassionate place. So, and I could feel the difference there. Yeah. I also felt the difference when you went from saying what you thought about it to feeling in your body. Mm -hmm. and even though um, the feeling was in the archives or whatever you were saying. But it was a, um, I still felt the difference. I felt like there was more connection um, than the words you were saying. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because our story often disconnects us from our truth, from our feelings and deeds. So it's one reason to have that little distance on our story by saying, I notice I'm thinking. Because when you have that distance, then you connect to your feelings and deeds more easily than if you're believing your story. So that's what it looks like, um, or one way it can look. And so the exercise I was going to have us do, it, it, it may be a little confusing, but um, it's often hard to do this. And so when you when you start, and so I'm, this exercise kind of personifies the the jackal in one person and the. Um, draft the feelings and needs in another person. So you heard you heard me do both of them. But in this exercise, we're going to get into three sums. One person is going to say what they want to work on, <coughs> and just in a few sentences. So I might say, um, my daughter had her wisdom teeth out, and I, I wish I could have been there, and I wasn't there. Um, and I feel really guilty. So that might be the story. Then two other people are going to play the inside of your brain. One person is going to play your jackal thoughts and judgments, and the other person is going to give the jackal empathy and compassion. So you can watch, watch the two parts of your brain, and you don't, you don't have to do it yourself. The other two people will act it out. Does that make sense? And can I take it home with me? <laughs> I know. <laughs> That'd be nice. Do you do you get to coach them? And now you tell me that I'm stupid, or now? Um, I would say in general not, because it, it usually isn't so important that they get it exactly right. You, you kind of can get the idea, even if they don't go exactly where you go. If you get way off, you may want you may want to say, you know, for me it's really more about this. Um, so I was doing this once, and a woman was talking about her house being a mess and the two people were saying, you know, one was saying, oh, I'm such a slob, I can't believe it. And, and she interrupted and said, you know, I really don't care at all about my house being a mess. It's just that my spouse bugs me about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so if they get way off about what it means to you, you can, you can interrupt. But, yeah. So could you say this again? One person uh -huh. says what they're going to work on. Yeah, I'll write it up here. So A says their story, and then B plays their, their jackal part of them. So this would be the, um, the thoughts, the judgments, um, the analysis. And we're all good at the jackal. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't have to explain that part. <laughs> okay. And then C will be the whip draft. And so um, C will give the jackal empathy. So, so what C might say is, um, are you feeling, yes, some feelings. Um, do you need? So it's as though one part of you is holding to seeing the other and holding you to compassion. Okay? Okay, let's give it a try. You guys look a little bit dubious. <laughs> oh, boy.
four. One group of four. Okay. So what time is it? Um, so I think I'll go like uh, five minutes each person. So maybe a minute for the setup and then four minutes for playing it out. So the group would there's gonna be one group of four and so they'll have to maybe I'll tap four. them on the shoulder. Yeah, four minutes, thank you. I'll tap them a little minute early. Okay. Sure. A couple of how was that? Does anybody share? Uh, I found it like we found, oh. we found the giraffe to be like really difficult. <laughs> Maybe know. somebody relates to that. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah Jackal was really easy. <laughs> and I would call that a direct reflection of the practice we've had our entire lives. Yeah. Yeah. We're used to talking to Jackal. I'm not as used to talking to Jackal. Um, I was playing Jackal and um, my partner said that like it was more I was giving advices. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that. I don't know. Is that what a jackal does, or is it more a like jackal. judgments? A I mean, it was like advice and like judgment. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah. A jackal might tell you what to do. Is uh, it? Yeah. Um, I think the chart up here. So um, you know, jackals do all kinds of things. So advice Demand, would fall in yeah. there, probably. Demands. Yeah. Evaluation, blame. Expectations, advice might fall in there. Yeah. You should. Yeah. Anyone else have something they want to share? Did you <coughs> enjoy that or get anything from it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I like yeah. hearing the, the general. <coughs> external to the person and the giraffe extent. There was something about when it was external, it was it relieved some believability about the story. Uh-huh. You were able to let go of the story more when it wasn't in your head, when, when it was personified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you a little distance on it. Sometimes just hearing what we are thinking out loud, or putting it on paper, just seeing it is enough to let us look over. You notice that when the giraffe got close to something that I really wanted to hear, I could feel my body kind of gently relax into mm -hmm. it, you know, kind of like relax. <clears throat> but I also noticed that my own heart or soul or something really knew precisely what I needed. You know, so it was kind of like, like, you know, they might get close and like, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. But not exactly the right words, and so there was kind of a nice recognition that actually my heart really knows what I need to hear mm -hmm. in the exact right words. Mm -hmm. Like I may not say it to myself, but mm -hmm. I know what it is. Yeah, that you realize that you you had that that self knowledge, and yeah. so and you could see that when they weren't getting it exactly yeah, the words that you would have used. Yeah, that, yeah, uh huh. And I could yeah. feel you know yeah. just kind of happy and more relaxed. Yeah. And, I'm glad you said that. That that often is one of the benefits to empathy. When we when we give somebody empathy, we often think we have to get it right. But that that is another valuable experience. If somebody gets it near or in the neighborhood or almost right, that lets you bounce off of it and say, No, it's not that. It's this. And so that happens a lot with empathy. Yeah. Yeah. And nice to have the physical sensation. You know, it's not just a mental thing. It's kind of like a. So you feel seen. when it fits. Yeah. 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 You feel it in your body. Yeah. yeah. It was it was cool to have the jackal be somebody else being my jackal voice. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like lightened it up. Uh-huh. I liked that. It's like, yeah, I feel that bad about this thing. And it's just a voice that yeah. he's doing, you yeah. know. <laughs> a really good job. <laughs> 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 I really enjoyed playing a pure jackal because 
I rarely will speak like that, and it's really nice to like kind of objectify it through a language, you know, because most of my jackal is it's kind of like a, a silent behavioral response, you know, uh -huh. emotional, automatic kind of thoughts. And, and it doesn't get concrete kind of under like the that. Radar mostly, uh -huh. you know, and uh, uh -huh. it's really nice to, to practice it out loud. And it's uh -huh. like place and, yeah. You go, know, oh, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Part of the fun about self empathy is you can let your jackal go, and yeah, put all those things into words. Yeah. And and normally we're doing this dance where we're holding back, like, oh, I think this, but I shouldn't think this. Yeah. I shouldn't think like that. Mm -hmm. And so just Marshall calls it watching the jackal shell. He says, I sit back, I sit back and relax and watch the jackal shell. Mm -hmm. And he says, just remember not to share it with anybody else. <laughs> but. But it can be fun. It can be amazingly funny what, what we're thinking if we actually let ourselves go and, and acknowledge it. <laughs> amazingly fun. Um, so, you ready to try that yourself? Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> or, okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> More like that energy, huh? Um, so, I was going to ask you to try it in writing. Um, could, could I ask a question? Sure. When you say try it yourself, do you mean actually pers personifying the voice? I mean, just saying it out loud is really important. <coughs> do you mean sort of theatrically? Trying the whole, whole process of self-empathy is what I meant. Oh, what you yeah, mean Yeah, so that would be a piece okay. of it. Yeah. Um, so I was going to try a writing exercise. Um, and it's pretty much the same thing. Um, think of something you've got energy about. It could be a celebration. It doesn't have to be hard feelings. It could be either way. But something that has somewhat strong feelings that you've got some energy about or feels unresolved. And then write down, um, start with your jackal voice. Write down your thoughts. Um, start with your jackal. And then move on, after, after you've kind of spent some of the energy, then move on to observations. What, what really happened and what kind of judgments and thoughts are you having about it? And then move on to feelings and needs. Um, the hard thing about doing self-empathy, especially when you start, is you won't get anywhere if you just go through the steps mechanically up here. The only thing that helps you shift and gets into self-connection is actually feeling the feelings, experiencing them as a felt sense in your body, and then experiencing the needs in your body.